Okay, the year's coming to end, the season's coming to an end, but yeah. we got to finish off with a really, really special episode. Yes, and year. what better time of year than Hanukkah, Hanukkah, Hanukkah season? It's the season of miracles. Yes. And boy, do we have a miracle to show you. It's crazy. It's really crazy. So, Yaakov, where were you when you heard the news that Shalmor Herabashkin was being let out of prison? I was in, I think I was working. Because it wasn't, it was like during the day, I think. I oh, yeah, like, it was like towards the end of the day. I think I was working for my brother still uh, back in the day, and I was in his office, and I was by the computer, and I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Because, like many people famously know, he was like the biggest like murderers in the world didn't get as bad of a sentence that he got. Right. It's crazy. Right. It's crazy. Where were you? I, it's so funny. I was actually, I was single at the time. Okay. <laughs> and I was, I was home, and I was on the phone with Rabbi Y.Y. Y. Jacobson. Really? Because we were planning a, like a meaningful minute event in the five towns. And we were just, it was the next, it was the next night. So we are just discussing what the topic of, of the speech who is. Who broke the news to who? You broke it to him or he broke I think, it? I think, I think we, like we, we were on the phone and there's a lot going on aside for our conversation. There's a lot of noise in the background on both our ends. Like, hey, we're going to pick this conversation up <laughs> in, in a few hours because like something's happening. Wow. And uh, th- that's, I did remember. Did you go, did you go to? I actually, that night I went to Crown Heights. Yeah. I started off, I went to like Chabad of the Five Towns. It was like a nice, you know, if I bring him, but then. It's like me, nice, but it's not the same. Right? Yeah. And me, 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 my brother Nissa, we went to Crown Heights. Um, and shout out to his wife, Shana, for letting us go because it was, <laughs> it was late. Oh, I thought you were doing a Raboshkin play. No, that no. Was it, it, it was oh, late. Was yeah, it was late and we went. And, it and was, you, you were there when he got there? No, he uh, got there. He got there like at 1.30 a.m. But we were there like closer, I guess, to midnight. Right. And yeah, I, in it, if I recall correctly, you, you asked me that like, it was so late. Like, why? And he speaks about the importance. Yeah. Of why? Like, yeah. Like, like, no, no, no. Like, you'd think like, go to, take a hot shower, go to sleep right. and like, you know, enjoy your freedom. But he enjoyed it in a different way. Yeah. Dida, yeah. Dida so it, it was, it was, um, he was great on this episode. He was just so open and ready to talk. And, um, I walked out of there like, whoa, like I, I, th- I think it was with his episode. Maybe I'm mixing it up, but like the whole time I wasn't sure the, my car is by the meter and I wasn't sure if I was going to get a ticket. I'm like the whole time it's like, Muna Batak, the Muna Batak. And I'm like, why am I, first of all, who, like, who cares? Let's say I even got a ticket. It's not, like, who cares? Yeah, you're so wealthy. But Just like, yeah. no, but like, Amuna <laughs> Batak, he's talking about like in jail, like, doesn't know, maybe he'll be there for the rest of his life. And like, me the whole time, I'm bugging out. During the interview about yeah. that dumb little ticket, so hey, Yaakov, definitely, you really your your moon is just really just, <laughs> no. He definitely gave me a boost in, <laughs> in the moon and the talking. So uh, yeah, listen to the episode and enjoy it as much as uh, we did. Welcome to the Meaningful People Podcast, the podcast where we talk to people who are meaningful. Yeah, that sounds good. First, I just want to start off with I, I owe you an apology. I used to think your name was Rabbi Ashkin. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually. Rabbi Ashkin. <laughs> yeah. Because everyone's like, Rabashkin. And I'm like, Rabbi Ashkin. There you go. So we're, we're, we're glad to have you, Rabbi Rabashkin. Okay. I learned your name. Actually, many, many kids uh, in the street, they, they, they would do that. They're Rabbi Ashkin. Yeah. Really? Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I'm like a kid in the street. Not, yeah. That makes sense. I just smile and say hi. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, fine. So we're obviously so curious we, we heard so many crazy wild stories about you know your amuna and betachan in jail and all of that and we want to get to that but first let's start with you know where you grew up and what your upbringing okay was. okay i uh i grew up in bar park um old time bar park was uh, a lot less busy than it's today um and you were chabad yeah my father is from chabad lababich i uh, came from russia and uh, he came across from Europe, uh, miracles of how he got out of Russia, and then he came across uh, in 1953, 1953. He came to America, and um, he had a partner, Mr. Lieberman, Allah Vashalom, who asked him to come. And, uh, and the Rebbe suggested, he gave him a bracha, and, he, and told him he should live in near where, where his store is. So he, he asked the Rebbe for a bracha for a store, and uh, and, told, and the, uh, that's when he opened it. Both his part, Liebman and Rabashkin was called. I don't know if you remember. Um, and so we wind up. I wind up living on 1421 50th Street. That's 50th kind of center. A smaller house, two-story house. Went to yeshiva in Borough Park. And those days, yeshiva was were looking for students. <laughs> 
and uh, it was actually Cardinal Stolen. I went to for the first uh, till grade six, and uh, then I moved on to Tervadas. There was called Tervadas then. Today, I think it's called Tervatim, by my goddess. And then the ninth grade, I went to the Babich. Wow, it's pretty like. I mean, I guess not he's Lubavitch himself, but he guess he's a modern day Lubavitch chassid. <laughs> but back in the day, even for you, it's it's a little interesting that you were going to like Stalin and you know, I guess not Lubavitch, not yeshivas. Lubavitch yeshivas. See, and 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 you see it all the time. Hashem puts you in places that whatever your mission in life is supposed to be. Like uh, mm-hmm. my my interaction in Borough Park itself. I mean, we had a Lubavitch stable there. But my interaction with all my friends. All my friends, very few of my friends were Lubavitch. We went uh, to Shabbos uh, to Crown Heights to my grandparents. Uh, that's my interaction in Lubavitch. I, otherwise, I was a whole week with other uh, parts of Chassidish, a lot of literature. So actually, um, the Ebrish set uh, really started my life for uh, uh, later when I, w- we w- I have a chance to build this little community in, in Postville. There also was a, a big a big emphasis on Achdus. I, I was able to relate to and understand other where other Yidden, their men hug him, the way they daven and uh, and learn to and, and it became very much part of me. Yeah. So I guess let's let's discuss um, fast forward to those days, the days of Postville, Iowa. You um, you didn't grow up there. You said you grew up in Barbara. Nobody grows up there. Nobody <laughs> grows up in Postville, Iowa. I'm just so um, no, actually, I think I met a Yid who grew up there. I was, in, I, did? was I did a, I once I did a series on Chabad Air in JFK, and there was a a bacher there. His name was Mendel Brandwine. Brandwine. Oh, after he came, that's not fair. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you say you started, yes. you started it. Yeah, but he, but I think this kid Mendel, who just got married, I think he grew up there. Yeah, yeah, of course we were there. Okay, so that's a little history. <laughs> okay, let me get a little history here. Sure. So, so I grew up uh, went to Shiva. And then later, my father started uh, this this uh, fact business meat business out in the middle. Uh, Postal Iowa is a is a, a little they call it the city of Postal, but it's really a town. Um, maybe when we came, it was twenty four hundred people, maybe less than to- less than two thousand. I was told even the sign said over overrated, but it really had. Um, it was more like a retirement community of farmers there. It had a small. Um, a, a meat processing plant called the Schlachtus, right? The packing house, they call them. My father f- thought that would be good for him to supply. The supply was getting less um, available to go to. B- b- they were getting b- the, the place of Shech was bigger and s- bigger and bigger, faster and faster. We didn't couldn't Shech there. So he got this idea to do it. And then he needed some help. So I went out to help him. Three years I lived with in Minnesota because of Chinuch. My brother, Hashi, he was there to help my father from the beginning. And uh, I joined. And then... Uh, uh, I realized that uh, we have to, in order for this thing to work, we should really make um, a, a little, uh, make a shtetl, make mm-hmm. a, uh, invite people to come live, and vanir maschil, to make it, because I was going to live out of town, yeah, you know, right. so I had a little family, Baruch Hashem, at, the, at that point in time, maybe, uh, I think it was five children, Baruch Hashem, and uh, my wife and I moved from Minnesota, now, and we started, uh, we, we started the show, we had a shoulder before, but we started a little a kihilo there, and uh, until and for the next 15 years, I mean, if you make a chalit from 15, 16 years, till the pogrom, you had, uh, it grew up to over 100 families. Impossible. Of all different types of Yidden, yeah. You know, it's funny, you mentioned out of town. I think like in general, there's so, there's out of town, and then there's like Chabad out of town. <laughs> out of town is like Baltimore, huh. maybe oh, Psaic. I'm not going to get so much flack. <laughs> Those guys maybe are Psaic? Psaic's not out of town? No! <laughs> hey, okay. Whatever. Even Baltimore people are like. You can email me at yakolinger No, 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 no. no, no, no. Um, but then there's Chabad out of town. Even Postville, like that's that's out there. No, it's, yeah. it's not out of town. That's out. out yeah, because to get there is, is is two flights. Once you have two flights, and once you land in a in a regional airport, you have to drive another hour and a half to get to where you're going. Wow. So it was different. The Shachtum was hard to get there. Mashgichim was hard to get there. People that worked there either were from Eretz Yisrael, away from the family for, for months on end, or they had to travel every weekend with delays in, in traffic and uh, you know weather delays and all the airline delays. It was affecting the, uh, the, the quality of people. So that, this is how it started. So we built two yeshivas, one for boys, one for girls. And um, it was a job. So besides running the business, it was actually having... So amazingly, there was only one shul in town. Achtos. Yeah, Achtos Yisrael. Achtos, I love that name. 
given by a Vizhnitsa uh, Chassid who came to work, and he was amazed to see, because we had, let's say, 8, 10, 12 different types of Yidin there. We all daven together, we all uh, made Kiddush after Shachas for together, we were bringing this one said a story, or advertised from his Rebbe, or from his Rosh uh, It was just, it was nice. And about the Shabbos, I made a Mal Malka, I suddenly had this uh, feeling, I got to, what do you do about the Shabbos? <laughs> right. <laughs> Nothing to do there. Could, the, the, the most exciting thing you can do is drive 20 minutes to Walmart. That was, that was, I'm sorry, it's pretty exciting. <laughs> hmm. It's probably less you than shopping in that Walmart than the one upstate New York. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, the, right, the Monticello. Yeah. So, the, so, the, the, so that's how it developed. No, nobody, I know, nobody realized that uh, this would grow to what it grow, grew into. I mean, we, were, we, you know, we just did one step at a time. And Baruch Hashem, Hashem gave us a lot of atzlacha. And uh, when I first came to the plant, there was maybe 70 people there working. And, um, and it grew up to maybe over 1,000. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And, and could you give us um, some insight into, like, the, I guess, the meat industry a little? Or I don't know anything <laughs> about shakhting. I just, uh, you know, get the food on my <laughs> table, and it's delicious. Okay. So my father went there. So there's a cow, Yako. <laughs> the cow goes moo. A <laughs> Yiddish. <laughs> Yeah, so we, we, we first came, there was only cows. We shot the cows. Oh, yeah. Then later, we started shafting chickens. And then we, at other places, we shafted the veal and, and the lamb. It was, it was a really a... So the unique part that Barsham we were successful in doing, which we're very proud of, the Bashkin family, is that um, we made available... But you see today, it wasn't there before. Before we, um, you can go into stores like Albertsons, uh, Trader Joe's, and talk about out-of-town cities. Yeah. And you can find a, a fresh uh, kosher meat department. I don't know how it's, how it's like today, but we made that. With that, that was a we pi- pioneer. I love that word, pioneer. But we started doing that. Um, we were, we were the, the position we were in the, in the middle of the country helped a little bit, and a lot of other factors. There's not time, enough time in the show. I think the purpose of the show was, but we the Abishai gave us a, the. the um, that I really had this vision when I first went out there. See, I was a uh, shlich in, in Atlanta, Georgia, for a year. Oh, and I, I. I uh, I really thought that's what I'm going to be a teacher like that 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 way, um, uh, um, and make uh, and and uh, and then my father had this need and uh, for that reason I got pushed. So I thought I what I'm going to do I'm, I'm going to make in Atlanta. I found out that um, uh, getting kosher meat was not so simple. I grew up in Bur- in Burr Park. I grew up in New York. Getting a piece of, piece of kosher meat was easy. I yeah. know the stores, customers come, come from Denver, and we had to f- make it frozen. I never realized how difficult it was. Anybody in cloth kosher meat in Atlanta. Atlanta, you see, is a city, has on coal oil, has, uh, it was a, it was a infrastructure. I felt it had a big, a big community there. I don't know if you know Atlanta. Yeah. And, and, uh, they had, they had, uh, didn't have cloth kosher meat had to be brought in. So I got this idea, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna make, um, uh, fresh meat in all supermarkets. It took a few years to get there, but Berkshire we got there, and uh, and since then it came now. Every, now it's a standard. So um, one of the accomplishments it, 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 it is was that to make kosher f- glass kosher f- meat and poultry available at normal prices to a lot of Eden. So this is uh, that's a kosher industry if you will, will it that way. Mm-hmm. To get there it takes a lot of effort because you have to have the right shachtim, the Yerushimayim, you have to have the right hashgacha, you have to have the right mashgichim. It's a very in- a very labor intensive uh, uh, thing to, to do. Um, you, c- you could you, you want to do it without cutting corners and but that's what we did. And Baruch Hashem, uh, we always maintain that. Okay, so I guess getting to what, what most people expect this podcast to be about. Yeah. You know, Not buying a, a nice uh, steak. No, I mean, okay. Well, that's <laughs> what I came It's good to know. Of, yeah. um, so so this, this takuf of your life, this experience, um, which everyone and everyone in the Jewish world has heard the name Shalom Mordechai Rabashkin, has hopefully, and I think, davened for the name Shalom Mordechai Rabashkin, what take us from the start you know what was what happened what happened was uh being I mean, read the book <laughs> <laughs> well that's a, yeah, definitely a good plug for the book for those that are gonna listen to the book we want to give them a little uh, it's such a spoiler season. alert though because you're sitting here so like everyone knows that what, what the end result is <laughs> oh, okay but well, anyway i think everyone knows if you if you, if you if you want to hear it um what happened was we, we were we were doing our our, our um 
our our thing being in business uh, developing a community um i would say we we went very far out to make sure that uh, we treated our neighbors uh, uh, or we live with the neighbors in a very good way but there's always that element that that's looking for uh, for the Salah Ace of Saint Rasakiv, there's always right. that element yeah. where, whether it be jealousy, whether it be pure hate, uh, haters. I mean, I, how do you want to say it? So, um, I I saw that from day one. Um, I don't think you're saying in Postville. Yeah, it's so funny because you got you like when you brought this this industry there, when you brought this business there, you built that economy. So you think that they are right? cars to tow? That's what you think. Because how many jobs did you supply for people in right. Postville? That's what you think, and and my father always thought so. But there was always that element where we can do without you. And they hated if anybody ever said something like that. And that, when I say they, there are those. those. Um, there was um, a comp- There was another st- a plant. I'll give you I'll give you a quick example. <coughs> there was another plant across the. There was train tracks. So one side was the meat place. We then across the street there was a a a, a turkey plant that was that was that was uh, killing and and processing a non-kosher turkey. Not competitive at all. Right. Um, my father comes there, and at that point in time, the the unemployed, the what's it called, the minimum wage was, yeah. uh, take a guess, how much it was? 850. 320. 320. Whoa. This is not like in the 90s. Yeah, wh- this what is, year is this? This is in the 80s. Oh, in the wow. 80s, okay, so what? 87. 87. 87. No, but 88. still, okay. it's not like Three. 1924. Uh, the Iowa was, I think in the New York, it was five times. What's the minimum wage now, $18? 320. 320. Wow. And my father came there and he says... To clarify, not 320 Yeah, for all Gen Z out there, it's <laughs> $3.20. <laughs> $3. <laughs> $3. <laughs> 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 which could, can't even get you a slice of pizza, but yeah. yeah well, an hour. An hour. Yeah. And I wasn't there at that point in time. And then my father made this strategic decision that uh, he had a 320. He, come from the, he, just couldn't, he just couldn't see it and he, he started it at five, five okay. something. So... Which to him was you guys to have some money to take home and then there we go so right and he gave them benefits and it's interesting all the arguments they had on this was at the exa- if anybody took a second to see was what uh, like a state, today became a name fake news it was like right. uh, 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 paid vacation he gave uh, on the, uh, overtime uh, 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 employee uh, health benefits right um, that's how he started so the guys across the street who were paying 320 suddenly became angry yeah. Because you're taking, he, you're taking all the employees, taking the employees, or forcing them to raise their their thing. Right. That wasn't his intention, but that's uh, I guess that was really sad. Then there was another aspect of it because uh, and this is me too complicated to understand. But the, the, if a facility needs to use water, the water came from either buying from the city or from a well, but it gets treated in in, the, in these lagoons outside. There's a wastewater facility. When when the plant was down, this turkey plant was able to enjoy the capacity bigger. And suddenly we move in, so suddenly we're incri- incringing on their, not that wasn't their capacity, their imagined capacity, because it actually belonged to whatever capacity right. we had. So it, there, was, there was this undertone, if you will, in the business world, but it, it really played itself out in the city council's uh, meetings and, and the homeboys and, and how they did it. I, I basically, I tried not to pay attention to it. I tried to do what I did. And I'm not going to go, I don't know, if, unless you want to go into it, but I wrote a few stories to show how the city was, there were those people who, who, who created this, uh, this problem. And, and, uh, and, and from there, it, it festered. It festered right. and it showed itself up in many ugly ways. And this argument, that fight, uh, there's another guy who came and wrote a book it was a that's a terrible, terrible thing. He wrote a book, uh, and 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 he and he just put in the much special lies, and and that so those are fifteen years of festering, trying to, which finally came up to this big pogrom, and um, which I thought. Uh, so you say about about benefits. So it didn't they, didn't make a difference if right. if uh, if a house when we came there was worth let's say twenty thousand dollars, right. and by the time the pogrom was worth over a hundred thousand dollars, just to give you a little scope. Wow, that's huge. <laughs> so I mean. They make a difference. Things were they things wanted were, us yeah. out. They things were festering. Them. Things were were getting uneasy, and then, and then, and then, so they tried different ways to uh, to the, at one point in time, which is in the book, they tried to inhibit us by 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 creating numbers that were in there about uh, how much salt was being used in the plant, and uh, amazingly, they actually gave me the this chus to, to figure it out how they were push it the certified lab lies. I feel like it's like Yaakov Avinu and like. <laughs> Love on, you know, it's like maybe yeah. <laughs> dealing with just <laughs> yeah. tricksters and yeah, kind of like. a few. I, 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 I pulled a few choice stories, and then you had, uh, sadly, 
He had uh, some of, of Jewish people who wanted to push into the kosher market. Mm-hmm. Uh, they joined the foray, and they uh, wanted. They had Peter. I don't know if you were following what was going on there. So then they, I, night from 2004, I was, I was suddenly thrown into this um, uh, national fight against Schieter. They, right. ch- they chose us to be the the poster boy for the go against Schieter. I had two choices. I could have said, okay. So what do we have to change? And uh, at that point in time, maybe the rabbis were willing to make changes. But I realized that I wasn't just there for business. Uh, there was a mitzvah called Shechita, and I, I just couldn't see uh, giving away anything on, on, the, on, the, on the mitzvah side. Right. For what reason? Right. So understanding Shechita as well as I did, I, I stood up. And um, actually, I wrote an email one more to Shabbos, exp- explaining clearly what was really going on. And that's, I think, that's my, that's my assumption, is that's how they zeroed around me. If you stop a second, why me? What do they want for only for me? And, and uh, I was the most vocal point because everybody was frozen. Right. The rabbis were frozen, they did not deal with it. Usually the fallback position is, okay, so what do they want? Give them to the few things and then get on with life as long as it's, it's halakhalically okay. Right. And I, I realized once they get into this, once they get into commandeering what the uh, shechita should look like, for whatever reason, it doesn't stop, it doesn't finish. And I, I showed it. I saw the rabbis who were the heading. And um, I'm just being very general over here. And finally, um, we won the Peter fight. They, were, they wanted changes to make, and the changes were not made. Right. So then the later, that moved into the next phase. Um, where, where we had uh, some guys that wanted to um, push into the kosher market. And, and, and uh, obviously not, the, not kosher, that way of kosher was a whole different. And uh, initially I was told by the Rabbanim that they, they will never be able to come in here. And, uh, and I told them I can't, but they looked at they told me, I got a letter from the, uh, they said, if, if, if you're not going to let us in, um, we're not able to protect you. you know, yeah, yeah. I grew up. I grew up in Borough Park. Mm. My mother ran ran a little crown de- 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 deli, and uh, and I was a kid watching. He's coming a lot of times in watching. And one day I was standing over there, and the guy comes in, stands by the counter. Not a Jewish man. My, 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 and usually he asks for buy something. You have money. And here my mother went to the cashier. They took out the thing. Then it was a five or ten dollar bill. It was money in those days, and gives it to him. And there was, no, there was no transaction between buying and selling. So I said, Ma, what happened here? So she laughed. She said, it's window protection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did. On 13th Avenue, they, you, the puppeteers were paying so much dollars a month so your window doesn't get smashed. Crazy. Because if you didn't pay for it, then somebody smashed your window. So right. did you need window protection? In so they told me if I... Sure uh, did. <laughs> so if I don't take the... I, I put my trust and faith in Hashem. I'm doing the right thing. So they came after me too. So this is like, it was like a, <laughs> it was like. The uh, world against. Yeah, it, it became, it, 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 I never looked at it anything other than I have to do my thing. I have to do, uh, as long as I'm doing things correctly, properly, the way Hashem wants me to do it, I'm okay. And uh, then Hashem thrust me into a challenge of my life. And uh, the federal government came in with, uh, with uh, all these uh, machinations, uh, all these charges and the state government jo- joined in. Were you, were you there the day of the, of the raid? Yeah. When, when, the, when the federal government came? Well, yeah. Were you surprised? Were you, were you, did you know that was coming? Um, I, was, I was surprised because um, the, the, the lawyers who had been hired a few days before had written to the government that they want to come. They can, they can, they can come peacefully. They don't have to smash in. Right. And, and then, uh, we opened the door to them. Um, there was, without, there was a, a time when a federal agent came in and tried to get hired. Uh, with fake papers and we rejected. You know, I, I was under under the understanding that the I, not everything in the plant was me. It was it was a big huge plant. Right. They tried to make it like that. Uh, the, the 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 office was taking care hiring and and uh, and um, so they were doing their thing, and um, and they came with with brute force. They came with with, uh, with brute force. And not only that, we tried to rebuild, and they didn't let us rebuild. They they the, anything we did, they tried to undermine. And um, then the state government came in with 9,000 charges, 9,311 charges against me. Um, th- and that, that, all those charges ultimately were either thrown out or found not guilty. Uh, I had two trials. I had a, had a federal trial and I had a state trial. Wow. And the state trial was after the federal trial. The federal trial came out guilty. I was already sitting in prison. But who knows what? And they, w- they were beg- begging me to, to, uh, to take at least one, one 
one charge from the from the state side to just plead guilty plead guilty and I said no I said I'm not guilty and um, and I'm going to go to court and, I, and I, even that's kind of at that point were trying to push me were trying to push me to plead guilty and I said no because that's not true and I don't want to I saw this as if God has for Shalom I would have pled guilty that I one charge that was a misdemeanor so really it's 9,311 misdemeanors but if you add them up it's uh, how much is 9,311 months that's how many years. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <a lot> of years. <laughs> It's it's a long time. Long time. <laughs> so 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 they make it sound one, but then but then they t- they they flip it. They see I was right. They were trying to paint me or paint the, the plant as a, as as a not. It was a, it was almost modern plant. It, it, anybody came through the plant and, and the trial. All these things came out. And in the state trial, I had half the normal trial. Guys got up there and said, "Everybody's wearing safety equipment." The play the place he says the refrigeration guy. He says this is this 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 plant is as modern as one of the top five. Uh, blue ribbon companies in America. It was. It was a new plant. They 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 try to portray this like like some hole in the wall. Uh, the guys yeah. trying to sneak through. And and you weren't paying like three twenty an hour. Well, so, we always ab- we were always above uh, minimum wage. If that's we always paid uh, uh, for vac- vacation. We always paid for for overtime. It, it, all these things. We had uh, uh, health benefits available. It, it, this this was. If anybody came, but well, what does it take today? What does it take today to throw something out there? And, and it doesn't take well, a, yeah, that's the a tweet. Media. You can take a tweet. No, you know? the media now, it, it's so easy to, if you want to portray something as negative, it's so easy to do that. Even, you know, so especially. What, what, what their president, uh, Trump, what he was fighting of uh, fake news, I was, this is a, in a smaller way, but for me, it's a bigger way. Right. Uh, same thing. There was, they, were, they were just throwing things, and I was shocked. I was shocked how this can go on in America. My father was shocked. So, any, in the long short of it, I said, I'm not pleading guilty. I said, it was, a, it, was a, it was a job. And I saw a lot of miracles along the way, how, um, how you didn't continue to dive for me, how you didn't continue to uh, support me, how um, other communities, not a lot of communities, came in and, and, uh, and, and, and joined in not only in davening and in, in helping with, with legal expenses. Right, really. Moral support, yeah. You had, you had the, the Satma community, um, and a pivotal, crucial point, and uh, it comes in and 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 makes them a love of Malka. And the guy says, maybe they're going to raise twenty thousand. They raised eighty thousand dollars in the Satma community for the Barvacha, and 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 that was a critical money needed to go into the state trial. State trial, and we went to state trial. So for, for right away they dropped the uh, nine thousand two hundred twenty-eight charges. That, that <laughs> happened right away, and and then they, we tried for a hundred charges, whatever. They, and then Baruch we won them all. And and uh, during that trial, a lot of these things came up, which is good on the record. That was just just lies, lies, lies. That's what I wanted. Finally, Baruch won, not guilty. And today the whole thing's expunged. You can't find it anymore. But but how, how did it come to a point where you were where you sentenced to twenty-seven years? Like oh, I, that's another. <laughs> how to come to that point? I'll never know. <laughs> and that that's a point uh, today. I heard my own lawyer say that uh, had had in, had the federal government not done things they have done, then I, I I wouldn't have been in prison. So so that's a whole story on on, on that side. But I, I, if you, I maintain the trial was uh, was not the way it should have been. Uh, you think you have a day in court, you don't. There's a, min- there's a lot of things that cut out. You can't you can't get up and say what you want to say. Um, at the end at the end of the whole thing. If she writes, uh, the judge writes, even Mr. Boston is, is right in everything he says, I would still give him 27 years. Really? Yeah. Why is that? Yes, girl. Huh. Uh, that's, come on in. <laughs> because that's the just thing to do. So, there's no, so without getting, the, the point is, I, I, I was thrown into a matzav where I was told by the, that they, they won a 27 year and I turned to Hashem as every you should do in the time of a tzara, and realizing the only one to, to protect me is Hashem. And Hashem demands when, when you are in a time of need, you, um, um, you turn to Him, A, that's the Emunah Betachon. Emunah means that whatever happened, whatever happened is um, uh, is Teva, because Hashem, Hashem did it. And Betachem means that from now on further, uh, you should have trust in Hashem that Hashem is going to save you. So that's what I did. So I, I, um, I, 
in the first days and weeks, it was very hard. In the first but, but, to take us to the yeah. moment that you're you got that sentence and you're gonna, you know, there's, there's a there's perhaps I don't say, yeah, I don't, I don't say it's a rumor, but it, it's it's said that when the sentence was you know brought about, the first thing you did was. You made a you made a shachi on it. Is that is that true? So, yeah. So 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 how that how that works like this? In, in my case, you have a lot of things that never happened before. Uh, Rabbi Lipschitz writes in the fourth to the book, things that never happened to anybody happened to, to Shalom Ravashkin. Uh, he doesn't not just saying it as uh, is a lot of things that happened in the case that never happened to anybody. For example, in the United States of America, if you sentence somebody, he has to be there. He has to be there. Um, uh, you, you sentence somebody. Mm-hmm. He has to be. In, he has to be in front of you. You sentence. Mm-hmm. I did, so I was Tuesday was set for the sentencing. Monday morning I called home from the from the county jail, and I'm talking. I was expecting a regular morning call. Hi, how are you? How you doing? How was your night? And, uh, and my wife tells me uh, they the 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 judge put out the sentence, and I, I, I took a double take because in my mind. Because you had to be there. Yeah, I wasn't there. Today's Monday, not Tuesday. And this is law. This is not uh, right. Well, she did it. So how much? <laughs> <laughs> Next question. How much? And she tells me twenty-seven years, and I heard twenty-seven months. Ah, wow. So twenty-seven months. I make a quick calculation. I was already there about eight months. I had, had already. I think at that point in time, I'd already won the state case. So that's out of the way. Um, 27 months, eight, eight in, eight and a half, nine in. And then they, they had had three months in because they didn't, they denied me bail because I'm Jewish. I was denied along the way. I got denied bail as the first guy to be denied bail for Jew. Maybe I'm not the first guy, but I was denied bail for being Jewish. So I, that's also part of the time. Be- because you're Jewish. They, s- they said I mean, that am- among other things, no, no. But among this, when they first threw from the beginning of the case, they threw me into jail and, and they didn't want to give me bail. They gave me bail and they took it back. And they had, and among the arguments was that because I'm Jewish, I can go to Israel and get, this, uh, I can get uh, um, Citizen. a citizenship. Yeah. They, they actually well, that's not constitutional because <laughs> that means any Jewish person then yeah. can't. Okay. So what are, you, what are you supposed to do in such a case? Call the police. So you heard. So you heard. Twi- you heard <laughs> what are you gonna do? I call a shab. Okay. So okay. you heard twenty-seven. You heard no. twenty-seven months. So, I, so, I, so, I, so you take the eight months I was in, let's say, and the two, three months I was like, yeah, twenty-seven months. So you figure another in my, in my mind quickly. So I figure another five, six months. I said, I'll be home soon. Look, thank God. Says, okay. And she says, you're not listening. It's twenty-seven years, three hundred and twenty-four months. You know, like, and the poor, my poor wife had to say this to me. You know, like oh, gosh. she got the. You know, imagine what she's feeling like. Right. She's not just a reporter, mm-hmm. a lawyer. And then I got caught. And it sank in. The, 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 first of all, I never imagined this. And uh, so from one way, when you see something happening that's so crazy, you realize it's way beyond anything. This is way beyond human uh, done. It's, it's abish. That, and I just accepted it. Because I worked very hard. On the, I worked, I'm always worked on my moon. Uh, I didn't really know what, much what what tochen really meant until I learned Shabbat I did. I learned that a lot. I learned that every single day, and I connected with Hashem. And I realized if this is what Hashem wants, it's good. So I said, uh, "Were you? Were you?" I mean, <laughs> and 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 then and then, uh, so I have, I've got out of the conversation, finished on the phone, and I got up. But it really bothered me, like. And the next morning they come in, they shackle you up like a dog, and they take you, they put you on the bus, and they take you to the courthouse, and they'll go through the whole. As if, the, as if it didn't happen. It didn't happen yet, and they just, just to, just to, so now she can check off. She did tell me in front of my face. You told me already. Listen, <laughs> listen, this. Right. What happens? So then I listened to this. Whole, I never looked at this, at this judge again. I walked in. I kept my eyes down. My sister was crying. I turned around to her and I said, uh, "You don't cry. They'll be crying. They're the ones who should be crying." And I try to keep my mood up, and uh, never looked at her again. And um, I love that. I just walk. I got then. I got. To, I got huddled back into the prison. I come into the to the to the, to the, to the cell. They had me with two other guys there, and um, I actually started dancing. It's funny, and I just try to pick my mood up. I started dancing, and it'll be good. And then about twenty short while later, the door opens up, and the guard tells me, <coughs> "You gotta come." So where am I going now? <laughs> So you're not used to these things. Now you think, you know, you're, you're, you're playing your day. And in these places, you don't plan your day. You're told right. you to move around. So I see, he tells me, well, I got to tell you, if, if the person gets a 27-year sentence, uh, it's so shocking for a person, he can take his life. So you have to, have to put you on suicide watch. 
Hmm. So now that now they're taking me into solitary confinement, which was, that's what suicide watch is. They put you on right. this, this crazy gown. You can't hang yourself, and you like a straight jacket. Not a straight jacket, straight jacket, but it's 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 like a hard piece of material, so you can't hang yourself. Interesting. You're totally without clothes and. Uh, and a bare, very bare room with nothing to do. So if you didn't ki- think about killing yourself before, oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, you start, now you start <laughs> contemplating. But th- that's just a joke, right? Right. So I tell the guy, I know about this yesterday. So I went to my 24 hours. I'm not killing myself. Yeah. <laughs> like, so for, for a second, he was like, he never heard us before. I right. said, what? I said, yeah, go look, you'll see. The, the, the sentence was given, yes. So I don't remember if he, he radioed in or if he got his bearing. He said, listen, I guess you got to do what I got to do and you got to come with me, something like that. So I followed him. But that, that's how, this is how, one of the many things that never happened to anybody happening to me. We'll be right back to this episode, but first, a few words from our amazing sponsors. Number one, you know who they are. You've heard about them so many times, but we just keep loving them because they're AMR Pharmacy. They are the best pharmacy in the world. For all of your pharmaceutical needs, head to amrpharmrx.com or give them a call, 848-222-1110. Guys, it's getting cold out. You know how it is. Even though it's sweater weather, and even though you bundle up and you put on a scarf. The, the word, it's also like, you know, we're, we're living in a time where we always want everything fast. It's a different question whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. But regardless, you don't want to be online waiting for medication after you need it. Especially when it's like a monthly prescription. Yeah. Like, like why, why, why wait? And why not have it delivered straight to your door? So if you're living in New York, New Jersey, it's a anywhere in New York, New Jersey, maybe even Connecticut, you could reach out to the number 848-222-1110 or go on their website, like Nafi said, and it's it's the last day for you to have a bad pharmacy once you join AMR. Yeah. That yeah, it's the last, yeah, that makes sense. And transitioning. Yes. Oh, Manus Freeman has come out with an amazing new book, Creating a Life That Matters, How to Live and Love with Meaning and Purpose. Well, hold on first. If you didn't listen to the episode that we had with him, right. one of our most popular episodes, go listen to it. Yeah, fire. And, and chances are, though, you probably did because so many people listen to it. Again, a little bit about Manus, he has the most... Yeah, of, of, of rap. Followers. Yeah, he has like 150,000 YouTube subscribers. Maybe subscribers even more. and the views. He has the most views for any rabbi. Yeah, he, he has some videos that have over a million views. So, and right. we were just talking about our conversation with him the, the other day. Like, remember, like with like Hashem, like Hashem's hand. What is a yeah. what is a hand? There's there's a, yeah, there's some so questions deep. that get answered in this book. Like, why does why does Hashem allow divorce? Right, or, right. Or like like the very practical questions. Like my my child's. Uh, you know, getting bullied, what should I do? Like right. just basic questions. It, it really is a great navigation for life. Uh, he gave it to yeah. Naki and I to read. We loved it. And the, There's this, really so much yeah. to say about it. This book is the essential guide to living with meaning and purpose. Hold so. on. Could I, I know you don't want me to do this because Naki is like, oh, let's just talk. I want to read what Dennis Prager. I don't know if anybody wants to hear you read about it. Well, I'm going to read it. Says. Dennis Prager says, Manus Friedman. If you want to shut off the ad at this point, <laughs> Manus Friedman is one of 15 a, seconds. a handful of original thinkers that miraculously appear in each generation. This wonderful book synthesizes his answer to life's most profound questions. It's a hard to imagine the person who would not greatly benefit from reading, creating a life that matters. Dennis Prager, a nationally syndicated radio talk show host and author of the Rational Bible, and Dennis Prager is huge in uh, the world. And uh, yeah, so please go to Amazon, right? Or it's good to know.org. It's good to know.org and purchase this book. Every Jewish bookshelf deserves one of these. And we want you on what Twitter. Makes bookshelf Jewish? Is it like a if it has this Chris Mila or uh, yeah? Uh, and we want you to on Twitter or Instagram say I read this over Shabbos. Yes. Or over the week, whenever. Yes. Now back to this episode. I had heard though that in those moments you you were pretty mistreated. You're, you're, I was he. I was very I mean, mistreated. You were physically, um, you were dealt with in a way that that wasn't yeah. wasn't correct yeah yeah you yeah. personally or or just in the the system it's now not. if you if going going through the book before we get into that that's what i said okay. going through the book i i come you know my son is writing the book and and he's i call me this and we're talking about things at the end of the book i say uh um well we're saying the way it is and then 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 uh, i say you know i bet you there's more stories in the book that talk that speak good about how they treated than than the other way right so it's, it, the, the stories that you could, that you can ask me, I'm going to tell you, is not to, here. To, I'm not here to, right. to, to. I'm just telling you things that happened as they happened. Mm-hmm. Um, when they did something wrong, they did something wrong. When they did something right, they did something right. That's not. That's the way it should be. Um, 
over the course of time, I was transferred either six or seven times. I was transferred once in and out to the same place. Why? Because before the state case, they came and they and they transferred me from um, Cedar Rapids, I think, to Waterloo, where the state case was going on. So my introduction to the state case was they, they demanded that I take up my amicant census. This has happened the second time. Second time, not the first time. And I was thinking to myself, Hashem, I did went through this already once. Like, I, Hashem, I held tight. I didn't take up my amicant census. And then I went through a whole, a whole, that was the first night in prison, uh, uh, what happened. Um, I, um, I was told to take my amicant census. I wouldn't take it off. And, and I don't know if you, I, I don't want to turn this into speech, but. but it's okay. The, Sorry, we want to hear <laughs> So the first time, it's inter- if you, for the listeners, this is, a good, this is a good story because I was brought into, I was brought into the place called prison. Shocking, because I was hoping to win the case. I was they 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 said not guilty. So usually, if you're guilty on a, on such a type of of, of a, a white collar case, they let you go home and you go back for sentencing. Here, I was remanded right away, thrown to jail right away, and I wasn't given bail, which is also a very extreme thing. Um, I've been on bail for eight months, and I always follow exactly. And they 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 shuffled me over to uh, to a South, this was South Dakota jail, and uh, over there they, I'm brought into a room, and and um, I want to speak to the lawyer. I want to just I just my bearings. The whole place there is the whole place is there, and the whole I, it's all designed to knock you down. Like you you're, you're under yeah. you're under so much control here now, coming from a place of freedom. And uh, they get bring me in the room. The guy walks in with the package with the, all these prison clothes. And I'm supposed to change over. And I asked the guy, "What about my amicant census?" And he says, "Everything got to come off." So I, I took a double take because I, in the past, when I was denied bail, I did. I was able to amicant census. And the United States of America, I couldn't imagine why would they let me amicant census. So in, in the course of the next hour, two hours, what happened was, this this guy looks me in the face and tells me. Listen, buddy, uh, I was trying to tell him I'm Jewish, I need to have it. This has not called Jewish law. He says, listen, buddy, a lot of things are going to change for you tonight. So <clears throat> he, didn't, he didn't mean it nicely. He meant it in an intimidating way. But to me, it hit me. That they want to change me. So that, that actually worked to my, to my benefit because it, 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 it allowed me to realize that I'm not just in a physical danger here, I'm in, I'm in a spiritual danger. In other words, at least I want to hold on to who I am. I'm a Yid. I've always been a Yid. I've always wanted to be a Yid. And they, they want to take me out of the because that's that process of changing me. So I realized I don't want to change. I thought I can't take it off. See, he brings me to a different room, likes me, and calls his superior. And uh, his superior is, wants to know what's going on, I explain him. He goes out, comes back. He had emailed to some rabbi, I don't know who, but instead of rabbi taking my my uh, my side that he has to have him because this is, he tells me I'm in prison I gotta listen to them if they want me to take it off I gotta listen to take it off, which I was shocked and he quotes me something as Dina the Machos Dina. He says that. Yeah, can you imagine? Interesting. So two things are happening here. He he's a guy either he Googled it. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't. I don't know how prevalent Google was in those days, but either he Googled it or he knew how to learn one of the two. Or, or I don't know, I go figure. And I and I hear the, the guy saying that. So I said, what? I said, you know what that means? He says, no. I said, I'll tell you what it means. And, 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 and suddenly I was like, I had to answer this guy quickly. And I said to him, I actually said this to him. I said this to him, these words. I said to him, you know, there's a great rabbi, the Lubavitcher Rebbe in 1927, that was thrown to prison also for, for spreading Yiddishkeit, the, the, the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they wanted to kill him. And he was miraculously saved, and and, and it's good Gimel Thomas, and they and they got out. So he, he made an announcement. Then I t- I'm telling this guy, I'm actually gi- giving myself a strength. I said, he, he say, uh, um, he tell, uh, he's made an, he made one of the things he, on the train station going in. Finally, they made it three years in exile, which was later uh, he was freed from that too um, after a few weeks. But uh, he said only the Jewish body went into Egolos, not the Neshama. And this, this is what came in my mind. So I tell this guy, you know, I, I'm a Jewish body and a soul. When it comes to, to physical things, I'm here, I'm listening to everything you want to do. I always did. But when it comes to soul things, Jewish things, uh, the din doesn't apply. Hmm. And uh, anyway, he listens to it. He's uh, like, you're tiny good, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I was so good in, in talking for eight minutes. 
I'm giving you all quickly because I read that people are listening here, but uh, I don't know how much the attention span is. I got into the whole thing with him, how, how if you live with your neshama, you're above, I always said I'm in a place called prison. Why did I say that? Because I, I, I was trying to say to myself, I'm not, I'm not in prison, my neshama's not in prison, my body's in prison. That, that realization came from this whole fight here, not fight, this whole, so I tell them, go back, ask the rabbi, you'll see I'm right when it comes to, he listens to me. In, in jail, they don't listen to nothing. They give you an order and you move on. Right. He says, wait. He goes out. See, this is a story which, which is good. Yeah, he yeah. goes out and this guy t- comes back with a message. Okay, I can keep one of them. <laughs> I, forgot, I forgot which one he said. Wow. Well, he gave me a choice. I forgot exactly how it worked. For a second, I was going to take one. Did he have a, then I said, no, I need both. I mean, if I can keep one, then of course I can keep both. Yeah, that time On the of basis it. of me being you, able to keep one. Yeah, before you said nothing and I say one, I was trying to... He says, listen, Rabashkin, if you, if you listen to me, I'll let you, I'll let you, I'll let you out of here and you go back with the population. I'm throwing you in solitary confinement. They call it shoe. I'm throwing you into the shoe. I don't, I don't want to go into a shoe, but I, but I can't You're take like a, a shoe. Not a shoe. Oh, okay. S-H-U, <laughs> <S-H-U. laughs> special okay. housing unit. Yeah, okay, Anyways, ahead. everything there is, uh, it's not special because it's, 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 a, it's a torture chamber. That's what it really is. Solitary confinement is a torture, a torture right. chamber. So you can only do one of them. That's so I said I need both anyway. I was committed now. I'm doing both. They came in, they see Bruno five guys. And, 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 they, and they came with, here they came with a, wheel, with a wheelchair. They came with a wheelchair. And, uh, and I wouldn't move without I'm going to this. So they picked me up, they threw me a wheelchair, and I got a free ride all the way to the <laughs> Southern confinement. And then maybe they dressed into these crazy clothes ah. and had a lot of these guards by, on the side watching me, uh, like laughing. Like the very degrading situation. And I got thrown into that. So now I'm no Yamaka, no in the in South confinement after losing. <laughs> it was such a dark evening. It was like I felt so like, like sinking. And, that, and, then I, and then I caught myself. I caught myself with the realization that, that what, the one who's doing all this is Hashem. And, and it's, it, this is an assignment. This is not, it's not Hashem abandoned me. Hashem wants to see if I'm going to hold on with the belief that He's with me, with how the Betach is going to help me. Oh, I'm going to give up my American titties and, and look for an easier way out. Right. So I realized I'm, I, it was a lot longer. This took a few hours. It was a very, very, very hard evening for me. But I, this, I'm, the conclusion was I, the, 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 the purpose here is not to change. The purpose here is to remain strong. I'm, uh, no, I'm, they, they don't want to give it back to me. I am moving until I get it. I made that a commitment. And then I dove my roof. And then uh, in the morning, they sent in a psychiatrist, uh, 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 officer through a door, gives me a test, and he realizes, he tells me, you, you're normal. I was, he says, what are you doing here? You don't belong here. <laughs> I said, no. They, they want to go crazy. I'm not crazy. I need me. I'm going to say this. So he stops. He go, go and 50 minutes, 20 minutes later, the, the guards come back. I get back my American citizens. But they, and then they transported me to a different place. So I, got, I started moving from place to place. And, and along the places, I got to know. Um, so now the second time this happened is before the state case. In this place, they don't bring a wheelchair. In this place, they actually brought five guys. Each one, one, one guy grabbed me. They handcuffed me. They took on me. I'm going to forcibly. And this is after going through how many months in Cedar Rapids where I did with me. I'm going to Where they have kosher food. How do, how do you figure? This place was out to prove, prove a point. I, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm just thinking what happened. He brought in four guys, uh, five guys, one guy's carrying a camera, and, and, and they handcuffed my back, my hands, and they started dragging me. But not just dragging me, schlepping, ripping. The guy on my left side uh, was, was, was trying to yank my, my left uh, shoulder out of, my, out of place. You can do that. You, can put, you, you, put, you do a lot of pain to a guy, and you, don't, and, you don't, and you can't see anything for it, really. But the miracle was my left hand was handcuffed to my right hand. So he, he tried a few times to dislodge my left shoulder. And, um, and, it was, um, and then they were ripping me, like slapping me. With it. I got cuts in my hands, which, which w- w- led to a very bad infection. In the middle of the state case, I wound up being transferred to the hospital for, for treatment for a week. But at the end of the whole story, and this, eve, this night, it's, they threw me into the shoe, a very dirty spot. And then the, 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 Hashem helped me. The lawyer came to talk to me for the case the next day. Right. And he wasn't scheduled. And uh, so they tell me if I want to go, go, go to the lawyer. I said, yeah. So I said, come. I said, no. I'm, I'm, not, moving, I'm, not, I'm not moving the American citizens. So they gave me back my American citizens. Uh, really? Yeah. You got it. I got it. Two times. So I, these, these, these type of encounters solidif- solidified my understanding that even as I'm going through a difficulty called prison. Now, a guy going through a place called prison can take it two ways. He can take it as a, a place with an ungodly place a place where he's not around his regular surroundings, nobody really sees what he's doing, 
um, whatever, a million of how many reasons he can come up with. Uh, when it gets better, that's when he'll serve God again. Or anyways, he has arguments. Why is God doing this to me? He get angry. And Baruch Hashem, Hashem gave me the understanding. It's backwards. When a person goes through a time of crisis, realizing it's from Hashem, he realizes what he ought to do to get closer to Hashem, not, not further. Um, and that's what I did. Could that's you, what I did. That's what I, exactly what I did. Could you take us through... I mean, we, I, I'm curious to know just, um, just what, what prison is like, but I'm, I'm particularly curious about like Yontif there or Shabbos there. Um, I, I, <laughs> how, well, do you, how do you visualize Shabbos there? <laughs> I, I, I imagine it seems like a regular day, unfortunately. Yeah. Or um, all, 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 day, all days is like monotonous follow through one into the next, one into the next. Um, and, and, and actually in Yiddish life, you're supposed to, every day is a day for itself. And it's marked properly. You daven differently every single day. I mean, Mondays and Thursdays, Shabbos is a different day. So part of keeping alive, part of, I, listen, I went through Baruch Hashem, I went through the eight and a half years in prison, and I didn't have to take any external uh, medicine to, to maintain my sanity. I didn't, I came out, um, it's a small anecdote. I came out and there was a lot of excitement. There was a the the tank. There was a young rich fellow who took interest in my family, and um, and and uh, helped uh, because they they took everything away I had. They they, right. they they smash you when they get, they smash you up to nothing, so you can't defend yourself. So from from running from having a, a access to a big business, it was my father's business. I, I went to to the zero. But Baruch Hashem, they were sent in people that. Uh, they were willing to help, so he. I went to his office to, two weeks later, like the like Kursa Tev, like the Baruch Hashem. I'm out, and I'm telling him all the dancing in the street and all the excitement was going on, and he and he listened, listened, and then finally he says, "Okay, listen, let me tell you something. I've, he's been helping other people in prison. That's, I guess that's his mitzvah, and." Um, Aleph Institute was very much involved. He's from Florida, if you know them. Um, maybe uh, so they they. Uh, He's involved. He helps that organization also. So I, I see people going to prison for a year, two years, and and they're and they're broken. They, they get depressed. They have to have help. I says this. I, he said to me, "I'm sure." He says, this, "I'm sure in two weeks." Now it's dancing. In two weeks from now, you can get up in the morning, and I don't get out of bed. And when that happens, he pulls me out a card with the name of a, some uh, psychiatrist or, or, or therapist or whatever. And when that happens, hit, go to him and I'll pay the bill. That, that's, what, that's what he was after. But I just laughed. I said, hey, don't, you, don't need, you won't need that. And, but but how, how, where, where, it's, it's not your own strength. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not your own strength that does this. This, is, this comes from your neshama. It comes from being a yid. It comes from being connected to Hashem. Realizing that you're going through a very, very hard time, but it's for a purpose you may not know yourself, but Hashem is with you. The main thing, the, the, the most difficult thing for anybody going through any, um, any, uh, any, any type of challenge, any type of nesoyin, I think the most difficult thing is the feeling of, of, of loneliness, abandonment, uh, depending on, on the, on the 27-year sentence, a young man uh, is, not, is something you can get, go, but I took the other route. The Hashem is with me, Amuna, but Hashem will help me, and, and I live from day to day. Shabbos was a highlight. You don't know how Shabbos looked like. The, 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 nothing really to describe a Shabbos there in a sense. When you go to Shabbos, you could have a, you put on a table where you have food. You have Shabbos food. You don't have Shabbos Different food. clothing. You know? different, oh, different clothing. So you, you have Shabbos food. Different clothing. I try to have a... So the, you can't have a, a, a Shabbos suit. So the, the closest thing that I figured different clothing was they allowed you to have a kittel. Really? A, a kittel is, is a religious garment, and in prison they like to have a kittel for for high holidays and for Pesach. What are you a kittel for? So they allow, they allow you to have a kittel in your possession. So I use a kittel. That was, my, that, that was my kapota. A white, white kittel. So I had Rosh Hashanah every Friday night. Um, uh, I had uh, one of the inmates there was knit, knit to make some money. Some stamps and 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 so I had him knit me a, like a, a, a different type of cap. A hat. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you still have it? Yeah. I should maybe brought it to show to you. Mm, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. During, during these that that so I said kiddish. I, I, right. I Shabbos was a, a day of obviously no telephone, little telephone access you had, no no computer access. Uh, you just sat, daven, learned, and and um, never watched television there. Never. Never. Ever. That's a never. Never sat down. And I, I guess it's not for the show here, but I, I, I really kept a, a life of, of, of closeness to Hashem. And, and, that, and, and like I said to the guy, when you live with your neshama, 
then you then you don't feel the pain that they're trying to inflict on your body. All these type of things that try to control, institutionalize you is all designed around your body. Mm. If you get if you don't focus on your body, you focus on the shomer, then it doesn't. And I, I, this may seem like a dumb question because I have no clue. Like, are you able to learn there? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, they let you officially ten books, but Baruch Hashem, they had more than ten books, and they allowed. They never really bothered me. Uh, my job was in the chapel. Oh, they give everyone jobs? I guess I have a job there. So, Baruch Hashem, I saw so, such so kindness. I, I didn't have to go to work in the laundry or in the... In the, in the chapel, the, what? You were talking to other inmates? N- no, I was in the chapel taking care of the books over there. I have a few, I have a few orderlies there. So I was one of them. So, I had access to the all the time. So, you were just learning? I'm learning. I had to, I have a whole shirim learning. Uh, Are you li- li- able to, like, listen to shirim or just... That was it? harder. When you're in the chapel, you have some, some media that you can, but it's not always available there. Like, is there someone in prison listening to Meaningful People podcast right now? <laughs> <laughs> like, how does this work? Wait, they, actually, no, they, they, sta- they actually started that MP3 program. Really? Yeah, where you can download music, ah. your music. I don't know how far it went. I, at that point in time, I tried to get some shirim to listen to, but they, they wouldn't allow it. And I heard now they allow a little bit. And I'm not music. sure. What, what music did you download? I didn't buy MP3 player. Oh, you didn't? I didn't need it. Really? Yeah. Wow. D- during, when, when you got that 27-year sentence, was there any point that you thought you were actually going to sit all those years? Or did you have this sort of thought that it's, gonna, it's not going to be this long? It's going to end sooner? So the answer is clear. The answer, you know, Shabbat Tachon. And, and th- I think here lies the, 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 ho- the secret, if you will. Here lies the power of Betochen. When, what is, how does a year have to act when he's going through a challenge in life? What is he supposed to do when he's suddenly confronted with, you know, everybody wants to have a good life, and everybody goes to, uh, suddenly something happens, they wish they never did not happen, right? Whether it be in Parnassa, Chas Hashem, or Gizun Chas Hashem, or whatever the people go through in their Nisayan, out from the outside, from the inside, how are you supposed to t- take it? They're supposed to take it that... Um, uh, it, it, it's that this is what it is, and then sit there and 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 it can't change, or he's supposed to have, he's allowed to, he should ask Hashem to give him a good that he can see is good also, which means he get out of the tzara. So the rishonim, we can quote you many rishonim. Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar to begin with the Shabbat Tochon, you can go, you can Rabbi Yehuda Shari Tshuva and the Ramban and Maral Maral. Everybody writes, Betochon means. That when you're not when you're a tzara, Hashem wants you to trust him to get out of the tzara. That means together with the realization of faith that Hashem is doing it, and therefore whatever he's doing is good, and you don't know it's a good, but it's a good you can't see how it's good, mm-hmm. right? Betacha means you trust Hashem to give you a good that you could see is good. So if a person is struggling with parnosa, together with a munda that Hashem wanted to put him in a, in a spot where it's now it's difficult, I talk about myself. A person put, I got put in jail, together with the munda that I, for whatever reason, I had to go, I had to get there. First thing is he, d- he goes and gets into trouble. He does, he does tshuva. Maybe there's uh, things he has to f- fix up in, in, in his in his uh, in his uh, life, and then together with that, Hashem wants you to trust him to get out of jail. So, who said 27 years? Mm-hmm. Hashem didn't say that. Yeah. And even when Hashem says you have to be in Mitzrayim for 400 years, they were the only 210 years. Right. So some Hashem, Hashem recalculated to start from Yitzchok. Mm-hmm. So it's it's not tight. The way the way it was yesterday was what you're seeing now. But you have you have within you the koyach to change that. That's what betochen is. How do you have the koyach to change that? A trusting Hashem to change it. When you trust Hashem to change it, that betochen itself, they works midik like a midik. When a person gives himself over to Hashem to to, to change and get him out of the tzara, he doesn't look to anybody else to get out of a tzara. So Hashem works back with him the same way. Hashem, nothing's impossible. So it means like this. Before, Hashem was giving a, a good that only he saw was good and to, and to the person looked like it was pain. With a faith that is good. Betacha means you're asking Hashem to give you a, a good that not only Hashem can see is good, but also is good. To me, good meant getting out of jail. Some people liked it in jail. I met some guys. They, were, they weren't looking to get out. There was a guy there that uh, said he's getting out, he was, his, his time was up, and he's coming back. He's doing another, he's doing another, another, another crime, he's getting back. He has nowhere to go to, his, his family's gone. He, that's all he knows now is jail. He's been there for 20 years, and that's it. He's coming back. So, but, if, if, but if you figure that jail is a problem, it's a tzara, Hashem wants you to trust him to get it out. So here was a tzara, it was a real tzara. The federal government, a judge, 
it says 27 years. So in the world of nature, it looks like this is what it is. But when you believe in Hashem, Hashem does it, how he's going to do it? I don't know. So that's why you go to the Shtadlis. We went through the Shtadlis, and, and um, there were a lot of beautiful people that came, side with money, and then you had this lawyer from... Um, Los Angeles. Los Angeles, this, this high Mesa of Apple. He, he, he devoted four years, never took a dollar. Wow. Uh, free. Right. And right. To, help, to help another year than from Los Angeles. Here's a sort of, imagine a guy like that. Yeah. He took a, a real, a real, real uh, sophisticated, a Yiddish hearts. And he worked tirelessly day and night. You had a Rabbi Lipschitz from Yated. He kept on reporting exactly what's going on. They try to hide things. I mean, you, you, what we're living through now. Everything is hidden. They like to work on the. He reported every week. Rabbi De- Debbie Maimon wrote an article in the Ated uh, tr- explaining what's going on. So they, and brought and brought my story to people to realize. And then you had the people in the justice system, people in the justice system, uh, big judges that said what they're doing to me is wrong. Well, they, and they, started, they, they started. They uh, started. You know, making noise. You know, <laughs> a lot of district attorneys sign on that the case is not just. You know, Hundred and seven yeah. signed on. Wow. And it wasn't it wasn't going, wasn't going nowhere. It wasn't going nowhere. So when you learn Shabbat talking, you I realized that <clears throat> Hashem will make it happen because I see the, all these good things happening. If it doesn't come this way, it'll come a different way. And that's what happened. It came a whole different way. I, I want to talk about you know how you got out, but um, before that, there's two stories. I spoke to your daughter. So one of them, I don't know what it's about. She just gave me code words. But one is, <laughs> what is about Hanukkah? What was Hanukkah? Do you have a story with Hanukkah? In it's very prison? broad. It's a very broad. Code I know, word. but I, I think she said yeah, that. There's, there's know an amazing what I'm story. And again, I don't know the attention span here, but um, it is, this is an amazing story. And then the amazing story is because when you live through a story and you just think it's a story to write down uh, for your podcast, that's a story. <laughs> yeah. But if, when, you, when you see it's a message from David that Hashem is teaching you something, it's different. So briefly, was the, f- was the first Hanukkah, I was, I was in a place called prison. That was still a time that I was in prison because I was, one of the reasons I was in prison is because I'm Jewish and they don't want to give me bail because I'm a de facto dual citizen. Imagine? Mm-hmm. So that when you pull a guy over, you have to ask me, you Jewish? Mm-hmm. Oh, you, then you go to jail. <laughs> You're not. You, you can go. Okay, you have bail. I mean, was, as wild as that, right? And 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 you couldn't get traction. And I was there. Hanukkah is coming up. I wanted to send the minator. I wanted to send minator. So I asked this Aleph Institute to please get involved and get me a minator. And I don't want just on candles. I want to do. I always did on oil. And they tried. And Baruch Hashem, they succeeded. Initially, the, the same warden who allowed me to have yamak and and gave me good kosher food and let me dive in, the same guy, suddenly, fire, fire. A, so he tells him, that he found a room which was fireproof and um, he had a light it over there. Again, there are a lot of details in the story about the timing and everything, but he finally, they come to me and they, and this was, I think, it's like Hanukkah that year was the same time as, as, the, as the other holiday they have. And uh, so there's nobody in the place. The two officers come to take me to this really big room, and in the, in the old, the old wing, a little dungeon room, like like straight out, straight out of the, out of the storybook, you know, like the stone walls and <laughs> the, 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 but they had wooden chairs around there. And in the, in the, in the corner there was a, a, a L-shaped partition. I, I wasn't I wasn't focused on that. And the, and the guy puts the menorah down and the uh, olive oil cups. I got I got permission to get the olive oil cups. I was ecstatic because a mitzvah means. Connection with Hashem, every mitzvah has its own sugula. Uh, uh, Hanukkah is light, it's warmth, it's freedom. I, I really felt I do the mitzvah, Hashem is saying, I'm going to get out of here. As I put this one cup of oil in there, I'm about to light the match, and these two, two, two officers are watching, they're staying in. I thought they, I was hoping they would leave, but they're standing there. And, I, and then suddenly I thought, what's behind this, this partition? So he said, so I give a look, it's a toilet. I didn't realize, you know what they do here? They lock, there's a 30, 40, 50 people in the room. And then I got through the bathroom. So there's one little toilet there, and there's no privacy really. That's how the, that's part of the hashpola, I say hashpola, the meaning of a person goes through. Just the, the basic human, uh, there was a guy in prison who was in there, he was a, he, he was a uh, kill for hire guy. Kill people hit for money, hit, hit man. He tells me, uh, Rabbi, and my nickname was Rabbi, Rabbi, uh, I got used to everything in prison. He's been there for a few years before I came, but I never got used to having to go to use, relieve yourself uh, because it locked you two guys in the room. So you have to go to the bathroom. Somebody else is in there. And he said, "This guy, a guy who's, who's not of the purest of souls, 
and he couldn't even handle something like that. You said how long is he there for? He got he, he was there for a few years before I came. I right. be, but his, what he did before he got he got caught was he what, killed people. What was the sentence? You know how long? I don't remember. Probably, probably, probably less than yours. Some, some, probably less than yours. <laughs> I was going to say probably less than yours. Dude, the guys the guys there for murder that were that were there for a lot less than me. That I go, that, that I know. Right. That were there for a lot less. Maybe twelve or seven. So Hanukkah. So, so, yeah, so, so right back here. So anyways, so I see the toilet over there. So I I um, I, 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 I was like, so I was caught. In a, my, my menator was standing overlooking a toilet. He was talking about this is on a table. If you, know, if you lock yeah. the room, you put it on the table. But it's not a table. This is overlooking a toilet. I make a bracha, make a bracha next to the toilet. Aside all the halachic permissibilities of everything, it just, it, just, it, just, it just, I couldn't do it. I turn around to the guard and I say, listen, I can't do it here. So he says, why not? So he says, I tell him there's a toilet here. So he says, so what? I say, well, you so what? Well, don't you know? Why wouldn't you know? I said, I'm going to make it. I said, I start spelling it out for him in simple English. I'm making a blessing. I'm saying, I'm, I'm talking to God. I'm blessing God. I'm saying God's name. You think it's right to say God's name when, when you're, you're right. next to a toilet? I got to put it in his face. He, said, and he got it. This non-Jewish man got it. And he was, he was dressed like a sharp state trooper. He pulls you over for a ticket. You know, that type of guy mm. that you're afraid to say a word to? He w- listen to that. Listen. So, 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 uh, so he sees quiet. I figure he's quiet. That means I'm, I'm, uh, he's on. Uh, he's he, he, he understanding me. I said, and on top of that, you want my light is about a miracle I have to shine over a toilet. I can't do this. So he tells me, what should I do? Uh, he's like, this is the only room they gave you. It's a fireproof room. And, uh, and uh, there was nobody to call even for permission because the, the, was the, the, I think it was the, the December 24th. The, all, everybody, or 5th, right. whatever it was, everything was shut down. Anyway, I kept on pushing. I just, I just kept up. Please, I got, I can't do it here. Why don't you take me to this little room? They, I see everything there in a small, little, tiny room. They put me in there to eat kosher food. They didn't, they didn't want other inmates to see that I'm eating different type of food. So, uh, go, so tell me. So, I, so, I, so, so I say um, to make a long story short. He suddenly he says to me, "Okay, let's do it." I was like, "Mamish, a miracle from heaven." He, he, he first he looked at his friend to make sure his friend was like the sort of eye contact. Okay. And he, honored, he took, without calling for permission, he took my menorah and he says, follow me. Great. I was so ecstatic. Now, now Hashem is really listening. Every, every, every time you see your davani you get something, Hashem is with you. Very un, un, uh, why should they change? Anyway, the you know, if I get one more thing out of this guy, I'll be able to feel like I'm, I did Hanukkah the way I always did. So I say to him, the officer, I got another problem. So he thought they did the biggest favor for me. So what's your problem now? I started explaining, listen, you know, the, you have, have permission to light the menorah for 30 minutes. That was, he was 30 minutes. He said, but our, our, our minig is to, is to be 50 minutes. The they, 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 you, 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 don't ha- you don't have to sit the whole time, but you, the, the thing should be burning for, for, uh, for, for another 50 minutes. Anyway, so I said, could you please let me sit there for 50 minutes? He takes a short stop. He looks at me, and you can see that he's t- totally confused. Like, first the toilet's no good, now 30 minutes is no good. What's going on? So he tells me, hey, how did you, Rabashkin, tell me, how did you do this in your house? I like, like, get down mm-hmm. to the chase. So I'm thinking to myself, really at home, I had this personal thing I always did. I was, I was living out in the middle, of, I was telling you at the beginning, I lived in a very uh, rural area, if you will. My kids were growing up, not, they came run down Central Avenue, see my neighbors, they came run to your friend's house, and Kapalatka, whatever they saw was in the house. So I tried to make it, whatever, we're, we're lighting the Mineta. I came home early from work, we lit the Mineta by sunset. Um, and, and right at the sunset, and then, and then uh, we sat. I said, the, the unwritten rule in the house was as long as the menorah's lights are burning, we're sitting there. So I sat there for two hours, two and a half hours. So I told him, you know, actually, my house, if it's my house, I sat there as long as it burned. How long? Two and a half hours. From 30, 50, two and a half. And then he looks at me, and I figure maybe it's a fast time, really fast time. Maybe I pushed there a little too hard. Maybe she was at 50. What am I? Listen <laughs> yeah. to how they wish to push me in the right direction. He says, it was a long 30, 40, 50 seconds, a long time. And suddenly he says to me, okay, you'll do it here the same way you did it at home. Why would he do that? Why? What is it in for him? He locked me in this little room. He let me the next eight days. Never changed it. Not only that night. I sat in that room for the next eight days. As long as the cans were burning, I sat there. So you almost got a lot of chizik from that probably. Oh, so you, I got a lot of chizik. You know why? Because it's like Hashem, Hashem is telling me, be here the same way you were home. Because the, 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 the inclination is, here is different. This space, this prison space is different. This was the beginning, the first Hanukkah in, in a place called prison. Interestingly enough, 
I was being pointed this out. I started the first night. I got freed after and the eighth day. I went full cycle, and the eighth day Hanukkah, Hashem gave me my miracle, and I got out. So wow. uh, that's an amazing, an amazing story. story it, no? it, it was so. It was told uh, that just a few days before, you know, you got the phone call, and you'll take us through those moments. But just a few days before, it was it was said that you know you were denied you were denied an appeal, and and that was it. That was like the last leg of the journey. Right. Could you take us through, I guess, the moments finding that out, and then you know through the so. What happened? What happened there was um, I didn't know it because the lawyers know everything. I, I get mail, snail mail. That's how I, how I got them. For all the lawyer would call me and tell me this is what happened. I guess no, they, them knowing this is like the last uh, thing they ever called me. It was uh, it was Tuesday. Uh, it was Tuesday, and uh, I think it was Rosh Chodesh. So it was Aleph Aleph Tavis, and I got a, I got a letter in the mail that. Um, and the letter was from the appeals court, and the three judges on there, and the big words uh, for a blind man to see, denied. No, no, uh, <laughs> no, no subtlety. No subtlety. You're sorry to regret. <laughs> no, that's no <laughs> sorry. Yeah, no yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That what you put in, denied. Right. You know what denied meant? I know this, this was like, you're staying in prison at 18 years. Yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm not stupid. I know exactly what they're telling me. Denied me. You, you, any chance you dre- dreamt for the last seven years fighting through the whole system, Trying to get out is over. Don't don't call us back. You the door shut. Clink. Yeah, I remember watching this piece of paper and thinking to myself. And this is what you get from learning and living with the Shara Betochen about the Amunah Betochen. It's not up to them to decide if you're getting out or not. If they denied, Hashem didn't deny me. Fakert. it. Fakert. Fuck if you don't have what to do, if you have what to do, you have to do it. You know? And there's a certain sense of sort of saying, to Hashem, okay, I did the status that I was supposed to. I can't do anymore. So really, it's all for you now. So I trust you can do it. I went back, and and, and looking back, the koyach either has for this. It's, you have to thank Hashem for it. It's not that like, no honest person will say, "Oh, see, I was strong enough." We have the strength. The answer is Hashem gives you the strength. But as you're going through a challenge, but you have to at least want to go down that path. Mm-hmm. That night we went to light the eighth light the candle Hanukkah. I didn't know then. This was the night before my miracle. I was dancing. I mean, Aleph, was, Aleph was more tsar. Aleph was... But Amunna, that's the point. Amunna. Aleph was Amunna. That's how I put it together. Aleph... No, but I uh, mean, the day of Amunna, the, the day was the same day that you were, you were denied. And the Amunna, the whatever Hashem does is good. But the base is betachen. And then what happened on base? Uh, I got, for the first miracle happened, I got up in the morning. I did every day for the last many years. I used to get up every morning, 4.30, and say the whole him. That was part of my... Part Chitas. Of my, no, besides Chitas. I said the whole Tillam. Okay. And Chitas in addition. I said the whole Tillam. Why did I say the whole Tillam? You ask me, yeah? Yeah. Why did I say the whole Tillam? Why did I say the whole Tillam? Yeah. I'll tell you why. I want to go home. <laughs> 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 what is the Jew doing? He has a tzara. <laughs> he says Tillam. <laughs> he says Tillam. Okay. I mean, you know, this, this is simple stuff that he does. Yeah. So which, which, which capital is this gula? To, to get out of jail. <laughs> I don't know. So right. I say the whole thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I, it's like I had a lot of time. I said the whole to them. I got up every morning because I wanted to say it in one shot if I could. This is, but that's as good uh, to say the whole thing in one time without a half stick. In one breath. Yeah, not one breath. Uh, and w- and without, 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 without a half stick, without talking to anybody. Okay. How are you going to do that? Uh, so I figured in the morning it's easier to do it. Nobody bothering, nobody calling you. Nobody. So most times I was, I was uh, successful. Sometimes I wasn't. But... Uh, um, uh, but but uh, so I got up. How do you get up? I'm getting up the next morning after such a letter to say tell him to go home. I said, "Oh, tell him." And I remember the hate started coming to me saying, "Shalom Matri." And I get it. What are you getting up for? So I'm getting up saying, "Tell him." I did this for the last few years. But that's they got a letter. That's we're talking. Mm-hmm. That's knowing that that's going talking. forward. Hashem. Yes, yeah. Looking going forward, Hashem is and that's not saying because I got a letter, it's over. Going forward, what, what does Hashem want me? Not, I, I think this, this is to what many times I would sit. People ask me, "Were never challenged with depression?" I was. The many times I, I sat there and thinking to myself, "What am I pushing so hard to?" Go? Maybe Hashem won't just just resign yourself to Hashem. Watch you twenty seven years, accept it, and just do the best you can. And then I thought to myself, "No," because learning Shabbat Tachon was clear to me and is clear to me. When a person is a tzara, Hashem wants you to daven and trust him to get you out of the tzara. So you really don't have an option. 
Hashem doesn't want you. you this week's story, next week's story. With Rivka and Yitzchak. They haven't 10, 20 years to, to have a baby. I did a Korahi. Hashem ki a Korahi. She's a Korah. That's why they haven't. Faked. There was no way out. So they damned Hashem until they had Yitzchak. Until they had the, the Yaakov. So the point is, I got up in the morning, I said to them, Eide Hanukkah, still living in a moment of, of miracles. They went from the first day, I told you the story of Hanukkah, the first day, now I'm at the... At, at, uh, at the, eight, the last day, and uh, we went to that. We went to Daven. I wrote a letter to kids that day. I, I used to answer most letters. I got a lot of letters from people. They gave me a lot of chizuk. I couldn't answer everybody personally, but the kids, I, I would try to always write back. I, I, I mailed that day. I mailed a letter I never did before to throw a thing in the box before night because it wasn't moving till the night. For every reason, I threw it into the box two o'clock. They locked us in three thirty, and. Um, I, I sat at 3.30, it's 4.30 Shkia, so I'm still holding on that it's Hanukkah, and I had some matzah there, some tuna fish. I made a meal out of it. And I washed, I ate some tuna fish, and I started saying Tillam. And uh, asking Hashem to, 4.20, uh, uh, I think 26. It was five, six minutes before Shkia. The door swings open, it's after the count. And the guy is standing over there, the guard, and he tells me, Rabashkin, get out. <laughs> like mm-hmm. And this guards, you know, two types of guards. Some guards were like, guys came in the morning, they wanted to make somebody's life miserable. I mean, you have guys, like, can you imagine? The guys come in the morning, their job for the day was to make somebody's life miserable. And, and some guards, few, few of them, they were normal. I mean, the guys that just felt along, they did the job nine to five or eight to six, whatever it was, eight to four, and, they, and that was it. He was one of those guys. He actually always greeted me with good Shabbos. Of course, one time I had a thing with Shabbos with him. So every time he, his shift was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Shabbos. So every time he saw me, it was good Shabbos. Mm-hmm. So this Mr. Good Shabbos swings the door open, and t- typically it was normal, like, like a chill, sort of chill, as you, as you would describe him. He wasn't like, after you, get out. So I, I don't know, get out. I'm davening to go to, to get out. So maybe I'm going home. Mm-hmm. My praise been answered. So I say to him, I'm going home. He says, you cha- may put it this way, you, you're changing your location. You're like, now, oh, and, no. And, and, and <laughs> yeah, so they, they were threatening to shift, to, 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 to change over from Ottersville to, to the New Jersey place, Dix, for right. Dix. So I thought, wait, now this, <laughs> this I'm, so I'm trying to get out of him. He said, wouldn't tell me. You have to go. I, so I took my towels and film, and then I realized something was going on because I went out, and they're not taking me to a bus. They're taking me to uh, the office building. And, uh, and the assistant, one of the wardens was there to meet me, and they take me to an office. I, really, I wasn't yet sure what was going on. I was diving, but you never know what they really want from me. I'm waiting. The, the, the warden walks in with the assistant warden. They look at me. They look, they look in the face. was just, uh, I got to tell you something. They're just watching them, like these tough guys, and they're just looking with this, 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 this. Uh, I, I like to describe it, you know, if you're standing by Yamsuf, and suddenly you see the water f- uh, splitting, how would your face look? <laughs> like, something like that. They're shocked. Like, they're they're shocked. standing, they're shocked. At first year presidency, they never seen get clemency, like they never seen like this. And they get the paper and they read me, congratulations, Mr. Rabashkin. The president just signed it. She showed me the signature, a copy. You're a free man to go home. Wow. So this is what it was. What the heck? I'm, I'm standing there. I'm standing there. And I always thought about it. When I get the news that I'm free, will it will it be more exciting because I was diving every single day for Hashem to free me? I'll be more thankful. Or because I was thinking about it. Okay, got it. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, so, you, what were what you think? I would think the first one, but that's... Uh, no, because you know, he's so focused on... Maybe he'll just be like, oh, of course. <laughs> what was it? Yeah, was kind of, I was, that was because I had. Wow. And I realized... You said, okay, the, it, was, it, was, it was the first one. No, I got it. I got it. <laughs> I, I forget, there was such a feeling of closeness to Hashem. But otherwise, I, 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 I just always thought to myself, Hashem, you did it. <laughs> yeah. You did it. I davened, I asked, I asked, I asked. You did it. Like, there was such a feeling of closeness, even maybe more than if I didn't, if a guy didn't daven, just got it. Right. I got hit by a, by, by a lightning. I got hit by a good thing, you know. Forget it. It's like you're accomplished. It's a patient, yeah. And that, you know, oh, trust Hashem, trust Hashem. And then when you get it, you feel, you feel, uh, 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 um, uh, Hashem, your, your mom is always with me. I mean, even the days my, my son gets up, right, likes to say, you didn't all get, your freedom didn't come only eight and a half years later. Living with Betochen, you were free every single day. I think he's very right about that. It, it, it like, it made everything in like, everything, retrospect. Yeah, it made the whole everything thing. just bright. Bright, the yeah. whole The whole the whole experience, yeah. Uh, can you just try as, as hard as you can to just 
take us through that that experience. You're, you're, you have a 27 year sentence. You're sitting there for eight and a half years. It's Zeis Hanukkah, and you're told you're going home now. You're about to, you're supposed to sit another 18 years. You're told you're going home, and your your wife's coming to pick you up. You're going home. So I I I, I, I just felt totally close to Hashem. Hashem was with me. Um, you can you can say there's nobody there to dance with, or mm-hmm. to the with. There's nothing there, but but I, um, uh, I just it, 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 a moment of just above everything. Like all the times I said I have to do a mitzvah, all the times I have to stay close to Hashem. Like when I was telling you before, a person goes through a challenge. The, the natural inclination is to pull back. And the f- first night, I was tr- tr- trying to describe you with the tzitzis, and they took it away from me. They put me in a wheelchair, dressed me like a crazy guy. I realized instead of pulling back, that was the, that was the natural inclination. Like, ah, come on. If I can't get closer, and suddenly all that all pulled together to feel that, that every minute of the time that was there was the closest of Hashem. And here Hashem was saying to me, some, and nothing, they thought that they, they're in charge. Hashem says, I'm in charge. And when you got that clemency, they were probably so so shocked to realize that they aren't in charge. Yes. And, and that, well, who, what are the odds? <laughs> they're not. Do, they're you, not. do you look back, it's been a few years since you've been out, do you look back and be like, that feels like ages ago, or does it feel like, Yesterday. It was just yesterday, yeah. That's a good question, actually. Um, um, I, I every single day in the morning, I I, I thank when I say the the brachas in the morning, matar and um, I, and, uh, and the, 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 the mission of Atayda, I always go through all the many miracles I, that, that I had going through the whole thing, like uh, even even winning the, the state trial. I saw what a fellow trial looks like, you know, the, all that all that. Uh, he has that in the book. You know, one thing you see in the book, I never, I don't put any names in there. Right. I know you don't find one name of a prosecutor, one name of a judge, because it's not about... Because all shluchim. Yeah, yeah. It's about Hashem. If I start talking about judge, it looks like I'm, it's payback time. I mm-hmm. want to talk about somebody. So it's not about that. There was a guy there, the prosecutor was in one of the meetings were trying to convince me to plead guilty. And, and I was trying to tell him that I don't think I'm guilty. <laughs> I want to go to trial. I wanna, so he tells me, um, Rabashkin, you know how a kill flow works. Yeah, well, what works? A kill flow, a kill flow is a shrita. It's called a, the, the place where you shut the animal, you hang ah. him up, and you dissect him and take all the pieces apart. It's a mm-hmm. whole process. Yeah, it says you know how kill flow works. We know how the courtroom works, mm. and we're going to kill you there. Wow! <laughs> I'd watch them. It wasn't about we have we have the right arguments. We know we know how it works, and we're going to kill you there. So he was trying to tell me, you better plead guilty. That's exactly, so it's going through all these miracles, one after the other, and, and, and surviving, and my family surviving, my children surviving. Um, so so uh, th- th- every morning I thank Hashem for all those, all those uh, uh, times. So I talk a lot about it. I don't, it's hard for me to talk. I mean, it's, it's pretty hard for me to put out a book like this. So it's a, a lot of stuff is private right. in a certain sense. On the other hand, I think a lot of Eden are telling me they're getting a lot of chizuk. I get, I get many, 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 many. First, by the sales itself, you can see that you're already on to a second printing. I heard it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing, especially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's. Uh, I think by th- when people are listening to this, I think it's to be around Hanukkah time. You know. Yeah. Well, now you just. But it's, but, but it's a, it's a little bit of advertisement. It's all word of mouth. People right. are saying that you can't put it down. Where could people buy the book? In any bookstore. Oh, you can buy it. Actually, my they have it also Rabashkin. My, my my son-in-law wants me to put to put the plug in. <laughs> Rabashkinbook.com. Right. Rabashkinbook.com. Yeah. And um, and Rabashkin. Yeah. Oh, I got back up. I'm sorry. Rabashkinstory.com. Rabashkinstory.com. Yeah. Don't go to Rabashkinbook.com. Don't I don't know what that. That's is. the other. It's a different Rabashkinstory.com. No, story. no, 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 no <laughs> that's. We made a we made a site. So we, we, there's a lot of things you want to put in pictures and stuff that you want like make like a, a, instead of printing it, just but to put on oh, the, some more some more depth depth some more documents right. and things. That, so we made a Rubashkinstory dot com. You can order it. You can go to any bookstore. You can order it. But people are telling me there's one lady. I got an email. She's so inspired by the book. She bought a bunch of books and she's giving it out to people to read. When you have people coming over to me and and telling me that they're buying books for the father and for the for the cousin. Wait, here we I have. I give a shit now. We have, I live in Jackson, New Jersey. So now it's a little bit... Uh, um, a little different than Postville. Yeah. Jacksonville's a little bit... Uh, Jackson's a little less out of town than Postville. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I, my kids moved over there and they wanted me to move. So I Hashem made it that we would live in, in, right next to each other. Every week I give a share t- Thursday night in the Shabbat Tochem. I have a, a, a nice, started like a, like a small 10, 20, 30 people type of share. Now it's, it's, it's almost double that. Do you want more people to come? Do you want to see the address? A- anybody can come. So what's the address? 84 Mill Pond Road. And they can, anybody can come to learn and, and, uh, and be inspired. But it's Let's hit three digits. Let's go. Over 100 people, Mr. Shem. Okay, good. We're over 50 now. So well, we have to double that. We, we, <laughs> we, we definitely went way over time, but I'm I, I really I want to ask. I'm sorry. I'm, no, 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 no. It's no. very enjoyable. I, I want to sit another 30 minutes if we could, uh, but I don't want to get a ticket. But while you're talking, I'm like, I need to have more patachan. <laughs> 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 um, but I, uh, we're going to ask just a few quick questions. Uh, yeah. One that I'm really curious about, because I have an answer for you, but I'm curious to hear what your answer is. If you could sit down with one person in history who's no longer here, who would it be? That's not a fair question to ask a Lubavitcher Choses. <laughs> <laughs> you want to say other than the Lubavitcher Rebels? <laughs> shouldn't say other. But w- w- give me a hint. What are you trying to say? Oh, my answer. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, just, it's up to Rabbi, you. Rabbi Bachi, you're thinking about some Shabbat Tochem? That's what you're thinking no, about? I'm no, I'm not thinking. Who are you thinking about? I'm, I'm thinking of Yosef. Like, Yosef at Tzadik. Huh? Yeah, like, okay. he, he's the classic person in the title that goes to jail and, and you look back and be like, oh my gosh, look what So I got, I got a lot of strength from Yosef and, and how he handled himself and how... Could you imagine a kid getting ripped from his father by his own brothers? And if you give me a minute on this, I'd, I'd, I'd like to expand a little bit. I, I, I live for a while. I, I, like to th- th- I like to use a story just to bring up positive things. A lot of people walk around a day and they're, and they're consumed by anger or somebody somebody did them something and and uh, and they didn't say like write hello to them in the morning I'm making a joke or something worse or they, they, they legitimately did something that hurt them, right? And and uh, and they can't get, they can't they can't be meichel. The Jewish thing is to be meichel. If the other one asks for sure, right? Yosef Atzadik was able to be, be, be so wronged by his brothers, and I can tell you what a prison experience is. It's terrible. The, you know, I try to make a joke out of it and this and that, just to make it easy to hear. But it's 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 a place. It's so bizarre. I can't even imagine me have been th- been there in that sense. It's because you can't imagine no. the place even exists. I no. have to sometimes have to look back and think. There's such a place exists in Otisville, off the exit on top of a mountain. There's a place where they take people and, and, they, and they do this to them every single day. So yes, it goes to all that. Maybe worse in 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 that's what in in Pritzrayim. and he winds up forgiving his brothers. And that Vechalkli said, "He finds out giving food. How was he able to do that? Only one way: when he saw his life as being directed from Hashem. That's the only way. He didn't sign up to go to prison. He didn't sign up to be king of Mitzrayim. He wanted to sit with Yaakov and with him. But once he saw, when he saw what was happening with him, and he realized that, so that's what Hashem wants. He, he accepted it with an emuna." And the betochen that Hashem will get him out also. So he did the shtalos, but he did maybe whatever that shtalos was. And he, and, and he was able to forgive his brother. That's what I want to focus on right now. I went through certain things. I had, I had felt a, a lot of, some people should have done things differently than they did. And because of what, and thinking, I, I was able to take from Yosef. That's chizuk. I was meichel everybody. Mm-hmm. Everybody. And I, I tell my, because it's not important. I'm not talking about the shreim. I'm talking about Eden. That 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 I was making everybody because whatever happened to me had to happen. But what I had happened. <laughs> right. Shavu Tachon says it can't happen unless Hashem wants it to happen. So I'm just doing it in a practical sense. So Yosef Mechila, be Michael. Your, 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 if a friend hurt you, legitimately hurt you, but try to see it as a hurt that came. For my Hashem it was, was orchestrating this to happen and then I said why would Hashem want to, want to do it why, and then do tshuva or, or, or get closer to Hashem so, to turn that pain into, into something good but don't blame that guy has to do tshuva for what he, he was chosen so you, you bid that's how you divide it what he did he has to do tshuva but what happened to you has nothing to do with him I guess that's the way to say it just uh, winding down something I, I've been that was a good answer no it was amazing it was beautiful <laughs> something I've been curious I would end with it but I'm saying now yeah. you, you say you're just something I'm, I, I'm curious about is there's so many videos and pictures when when you released and you were I, I personally was at 770 that, that, that night yeah. ended up leaving before you got there because you got there like I don't know it was like Late, 2 a.m. 1 Dude, o'clock 1 o'clock yeah but I went was, to my father and mother that's yeah yeah I mean, that's more important uh, but it, it was crazy and I was just thinking was there a moment where, like, th- was anybody telling you, like, okay, like, uh, maybe your kid saying, you know, you sure you're, you're, you're able to do this right now? You, you just, the shock that you're going a lot, through. A and, lot of. And, and, like, 
how do you balance that? Did you think like, maybe I should take it easy. Maybe I shouldn't be going crazy. Maybe I should, but you, you made this a simcha, not for just yourself and for your family. It was, a, it was a night. It was a day. It was a simcha for Klal Yisrael for a while after that. But especially that night, the streets were filled. People were making l'chaim. It was the most amazing day. How do you yes, sum up I that whole experience? I can sum it up like this. Um, Living eight and a half years, like I said, and being able to, you know, the, the, going, the, the, the guards described me. I didn't know this when I was in there. But I, I heard that after I, I left, the guards were saying, like, you know, who, some guys didn't know me. Who's this Rabachkin that uh, got freed? What happened there? See, they, they were describing me saying, you know, the guy that was always happy? <laughs> <laughs> I never saw myself that way. Why? Right? Because I wasn't happy to be there. I wanted to go home. Right. I, wanted, I wanted to be with my family. I was I was happy in the sense I was doing Hashem's wanting. I was happy in the sense that I was felt as I'm as ever that Hashem, that Hashem wants me to do. And Hashem, the talking, but that inner that inner happiness had to had to come out with other watching. So coming out, I was suddenly thrust. I never imagined this would happen. Right. I was suddenly thrust with everybody so happy. Now I was taking a lot of chizik from everybody davening for me. That's true. I was taking a lot of chizik from everybody, writing letters or giving uh, mitzvahs, uh, uh, giving money for 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 uh, family, millions yeah. of dollars came in. From where? I mean, who who would who who would uh, who, who would think this is even possible? So they just opened their hearts to so many people. So to me, it was the, it, I I I felt this is this is our simcha. Everybody came, everybody felt, and more maybe more importantly, here Hashem was showing everybody there could be a Jew stuck alone against. Um, one of the oddest moments in the, in the trial, federal trial, was four weeks. Every morning, I never, I never missed a beat. She started, she started the trial, the United States of America versus Shalom Rubashkin. I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> not, fit, not for your teams. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here you have a, a, a guy, you're talking about the uh, Dovid and Goliath. I mean, you're talking about the, the superpower of the, of the world uh, can print out a trillion dollars. The Machlikas is two trillion or three trillion. I mean, that's the Machlikas. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy can't, he took everything away. So, and they wish to made a nest. For guys, that was the message. About, I felt that it was it was a mamish but freeing me is is to is to share this joy with everybody. Everybody should, everybody should learn. That's why I'm really here today. Everybody should learn. Everybody should learn that no yid is alone. That's a muna. No yid is alone. That whatever is going on in his life, it's not generally by Hashem. It's specifically for, with a mission, and the part of the mission is for the yid to take that amuna. And and now bring it to the level of base. The betochen that Hashem will now change that to a way that will save you out of the tzara, to the gimel, to that that giula. And same thing with our golos now. It's maybe a good way to finish. Is that is that you should start with it, middle live with it. That all this golos, all these thousands of years of pain, and 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 Nebuch, we even went through all this tzara. It's not stam. You know, it is, we're coming to our golos with the Mashiach, and now. We don't see it, but we'll come a moment of time that we'll we'll see the beautiful connection we have with Hashem. And when that happens, we'll be dancing. That was a night that you can't forget. Yeah, yeah the the joy of all different types of eating. Just just happy, happy to be a yid, happy to see Hashem. Into my a Jew stuck. I got a letter that you're stuck here 18 years, and 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 these letters weren't so simple. I mean, eight years. I had the, the the nature of it was they said and they carried through. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who's changing this? Exactly. Shall, I'll change Especially it. Especially a day later. Day later. Well, one last Next thing. Day. One last thing. Half half have, time. You ever, <laughs> you ever you ever get an opportunity to speak to President Trump and thank him for what he, what I he did? I did not. So if I let's say you could speak to him right now, if he's listening, what, what would you say to him? No, no, no. He's gonna say something else. Okay. Right I, I, I did write a letter okay. to him. Um, I don't know if I printed it in the book, the copy of that letter, but um, it's a handwritten letter. And um, and Olive did, um, suggested to me that I write a letter. So I to went, sat down to, to write him such a letter. And then I was thinking, how do I write a letter? Thank you. And how does that fit with the moon? But Hashem did it. Right. So learning Shabbat talking a few times, a few times, more than a few times, mm-hmm. there, was a, there was a spot over there, there was a point over there in Perik Dalad where he, he, he teaches you how to say thank you to a person to get and still have that amuna that it's everything from Hashem and that nobody else that makes a difference, right? Mm-hmm. And what he says is two things. That this is this is really, and I think this shows what President Trump really is. A, you thank him for the leif toif. You thank him for, for the goodness of his heart. And you thank him for being the messenger that Hashem chooses to do his work because Hashem uses righteous people, as he writes, to do good things. 
So I wrote to the president, I always believed that Hashem would free me. I lived every day with that. And, and Hashem sent the most righteous person, uh, a person that he could see, to, to, to be the one to, to carry through. So I mean, not, not word for word, but that was the idea. The idea is uh, the president is obviously a, a, a person who, who, I, who you can see. Hashem chooses him to do such a thing, but to help a yid out of his tzara, and, and not only specifically, also for all Yudin. What he did to, for Yudin in Nazi Israel, what he did for Yudin in in uh, in America when it came to the time for the open the shuls, what he what he did for many other Yudin that he that he he, he gave clemencies before he left, he is a leif toiv, and he, he is a righteous person. There's no question about it. And if anybody podcast has a problem with that, then uh, it is a free country. They say possibly, <laughs> if it still is. So I, I'm giving you my opinion. My opinion is is that uh, President Donald Trump is one of the Hasidu Musa'ilam in the sense that he is committed to in belief in Hashem he's against evil he's against uh, 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 injustice this injustice was brought in front of him he could even easily have said as, as many others said it's not his problem it's right. people and he took and he did something unprecedented he, in the first year of his presidency he, he, he did the right thing and he freed Ayyid and Ayyid he, he, there was nothing in it for him Right. There's nothing. There's no. There's he, only no had, he only. He only had to lose. In fact, right. right. People could criticize him. One hundred percent. No poll. He didn't sit in a poll in a think tank. If he lets out Shalom Rabashkin, he'll get more more votes. Sadly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so he, and, but he knew it's the right thing. I, got, I, I hope I answered your question. So yes. if I can meet him, I'll tell him uh, uh, personally, and uh, and Hashem should bless him. Hashem should bless him. Hashem should put him back into power. And, and so he can continue doing the good things that he did before for you and for and for and, and for and bring us uh, only brachas. Yeah, well, Rabbi Rabashkin, thank you so much okay. for uh, sitting down and telling us okay. your story. I, I, I think I, there's I, a lot more. There's some go, some I, I, named I, ghost in jail that, in prison that we didn't get yeah. to. Well, well, maybe we'll people have you definitely need time. to go ahead and, and and buy this book though. Wherever they find themselves, you walk into any Judaica story, you get head to rabashkinstory.com, and. Um, Maybe buy a few and give it out to people <laughs> you see in the street. I was going to tell you about that. That's that, that there was a guy came after this year. He had bought six books in the bookstore. Yeah. This is the beginning. And he wanted me to, to sign the, uh, each of the books because he's sending it to each one of his family. When that happened, I said to, I said to my wife, this is, this is really... When a guy buys a book for every one of his family, yeah. now, now you know that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. I hope you wiped your tears away and... I hope you did. Did you get, tear up during this one? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. But for those listening, if you're eating like a donut right now, just wave your just wave your hand in the air. And what say, if it's like Pesach? Like, I don't know. So, so, you know what? Matzo. A matzo donut? Do they make Pesach with the donuts yet? Uh, it's we're question. there we're at that point we got we have collar rolls right <laughs> we have collar rolls we can have donuts just put just put icing on it but yeah that was a really enjoyable conversation and um definitely go out and buy his book yes and, and also like the advertisement you heard please also buy uh R- R- manis i always mess, like mess up his name what's so see, some people call him manis some people call him manis but it's rabbi manis or manis friedman creating a life that matters Go ahead and, and pick it up. You go to itsgoodtoknow.org or Amazon. It's an amazing book, an amazing person. But also, while you're at it, while you're like in the book buying like mode, buy the book that just came out, Shalom Shalom Harabashkin. It will be in the show notes. Yeah. So you can buy it there. Um, a link to there. And also, okay, we, we have coming up, I think, I may be wrong on that. I think we have three more episodes for this season. Um, season two coming to the end. Again, we go our season by the year. So. 2021 is uh, the end of season two, and we have someone incredible for our last interview uh, of the year. Uh, if you went to Turo, you definitely know who he is, and if not, I don't know if I want to give it away, but okay. he's someone who's who larger than life, so much life experience, and he's been to so many places, and he's really like people really are enjoying those episodes where we talk about like the building of foundations of Jewish life in America. So. You'll definitely hear a lot about that. And um, unrelated, he has a mustache, and I love yeah, that. Yeah, and following that, we yeah. have two episodes that will be coming out, season in review, where we go ahead and talk about each episode, the guests, the behind-the-scenes stuff that maybe we you didn't know or you don't know. 
Um, so you'll get to hear all of that. So which, make which sure- by the way, doesn't feel like it, but Amari Stoudemire, that episode, which till this date is our biggest episode, yeah. was in season two. So we're going to delve into all the episodes, but that one in particular, yeah. we get so many questions about. So we're going to go into like how, it. Like Yaakov throwing up right before. It was just crazy. But we, 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 you know, we powered through. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and it was good. Gatorade. And, and, you know. and also, like, I peed for his dry cleaning. So he didn't, <laughs> he didn't care. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know. Whatever. It was a win-win. Uh, but no, we, we're going to delve into it. And uh, we had a great time on our first season going through those. Um, yeah, so so check those out. And they're going to be a great time. And until next time, you could be. I really don't like that. Okay, I, I, I it's hard. It's not easy. But I'm going to get something. We're going to get something. It ain't it. See you guys.